Hello and welcome to episode 83 of Pentagon for Gold where today we are playing against FC Porto in the Champions League. Now we actually finished second in our group in the Champions League. If we have a quick look at the group stage we'll be able to see that. Let's go, here we are. So Juventus came first in their group, Porto came first in their group ahead of Borussia Dortmund. Real Madrid just beat out Ajax. PSG comfortably ahead of Valencia, Barcelona just beating out Leipzig, Inter three points ahead of Man United despite Man United having a better goal difference, and Atletico similarly three points ahead of Man City. We actually came second by one point compared to Chelsea, unfortunately. We, we did manage to win um, that final game quite comfortably against Benfica 5-1, but uh, unfortunately that one game we had against Benfica at the start of the group at home really did cost us in the end. Weirdly, we seem to be better away from home in this group than we were at home. Not quite sure why that was, but um, yeah, so we've come second in our group. We then got lucky, I think, in that we've got Porto as our opponents. I think they've sold their best player. This guy is good. But yeah, their best player was a striker. He was an Italian striker. I'm not sure where he's gone. Yeah, it looks like he's gone completely. Maybe if we have a look at their transfer history, we'll be able to see. So they sold Cesare Pizzolato, who uh, looks pretty impressive, doesn't he? Very, very quick. Um, <laughs> awful jumping reach. Five foot nine, but he's a very dangerous player, so it's kind of good that he went. And actually, Dortmund wanted him, so it's kind of lucky that he's not gone to them because they are one of our rivals. We actually have made a few signings of our own, um, and we'll have a quick look at them right now. So, transfer history we have signed these guys. So, Jao Paolo from Santos. He was the highest rated player in the entirety of the Brazilian division and looks very good. He's an attacking midfielder, so he'll be our backup choice, really. And he's very two-footed as well, which is really good. We then got Arjen Hoxha, who is a goalkeeper, who's German, and uh, six foot two. He's, he's going to be a good backup option. Cost a fair bit of money, but uh, reasonably happy that we've got him in. We then signed Bart Mays for 85 million, rising to 95. He is an absolutely outstanding midfielder. He's going to play as a box to box for us, three and a half star there, but four and a four star elsewhere. And I think he can potentially improve a tiny bit. Yeah, potentially a world class central midfielder if he isn't already. Um, he is really, really quite something. Very, very good all round stats. Amazing passing, first touch technique, work rate. He's just incredible and very glad that we managed to get him in. Um, he did not come cheap, but he was someone that we identified ages ago as wanting to buy him. We've actually spent 456 million this season. Not too shabby. And then we also signed Marcus Scheidel, who sadly is unregistered for the Champions League. Uh, he's only two star. Um, and actually, it's probably not the greatest deal because... <laughs> He went on a free from Bayern to Groningen at the start of the season. We've now brought him back 15.25 million. But um, I was not involved in releasing him. And I think he is actually better than um, than perhaps the game's giving him credit for here. He's, uh, I think he's better than um, Alfonso Davies at this point. Probably the physicals really do help him out. He's not amazing technically, but he's got some okay mentals and some really good physicals. So... He's basically just a backup option in case we get a big injury to Gentilini. And he's very two-footed as well, which really helps. Um, in terms of sales, we sold Luca Italiano for 5 billion. That was after Hoxha came in. So really 10 million um, for Hoxha. Um, we're never going to have him go up to 20 million because he's not going to play enough. Um, then we had Sead Kadrich going to Bournemouth for 40 million. He uh, had actually been really quite highly rated when we had him at the start, and he actually was from the Youth Academy. But um, once he, you know, he wasn't really playing under me, um, and he was really dropping in stats, and just 10 finishing, not really great. Not the fastest player either, so he doesn't really suit the wing. So, yeah, not quite good enough. 
And then Alfredo Vigna went for 50 million to Arsenal. We're paying 40k of his wages. And he's got some good stats, but wasn't going to be playing very much for us. And as you can see, he only made eight appearances in the Bundesliga so far this season. Um, so we've made a bit of a loss on the players that we did sell, um, but it's okay, we can cope. We then have a couple of players leaving on freeze, not really good enough to bother showing you, but we have got Jacko van der Heuvel coming in. He is coming in from Manchester United on a free transfer at the end of the season. They wanted 30 million to sign him immediately, so we just, we're just just going to wait. Um, we might never actually use this guy because hopefully we'll win the Champions League this season and be able to move on to FM22. But yeah, he's uh, he's a good player, um, four-star ability, and was the best player with an expiring contract by an absolute mile. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the schedule to see how we've done recently. Um, so the last game you saw was the 5-1 victory against Benfica. We then followed that up with a 2-1 loss to Dortmund and then had a really good run, uh, apart from that one draw against Union Berlin. We then actually lost to Fortuna Dusseldorf 3-1, which was a bit of a surprise. I'm not quite sure how that one happened. But since then, we've done really well and got a 3-2 win. A very exciting game involving a reasonably late goal. And that was against Bayer Leverkusen. So today, we're playing the two legs against Porto, which are a month apart also. And uh, I'll update you on these three Bundesliga games and the DFB Pokal once we've done the first Porto game. I'd argue that today's squad is actually our strongest team that we have available to us. Uh, perhaps the only position you might consider is Rubio uh, versus Troy, but I think Rubio's just been a bit more productive this season and he's got that exciting creativity and long shots in particular that really help. Um, Aramayo actually wants to leave because when we signed Mays, he felt like he was going to be replaced. He was a squad player anyway, so it doesn't really change his game time. But I didn't want to make any promises that I didn't know I would be able to keep. Um, and now he's asking to leave. In reality, I think it'll be fine. We'll just keep playing him every so often. And uh, that should be enough to get him happy again. Um, but I don't particularly want to lose him. He's a good player and definitely too uh, too good to be letting go at this stage because he's only 18 years old and he's already a high level Bundesliga player I think your Jude Bellingham's perhaps very very good player and uh, definitely going to be a useful player to keep around for the future and will be world class I have no doubt of that um, as it happens we've actually gone 1-0 up with an early goal from Miguel San Martin and uh, that's a really really strong start to the game Porto are actually playing a very odd formation of 5-2-2, two, two, where they're both very narrow and a 1. Um, I guess that's two attacking midfielders rather than wingers. Um, seems like a bit of an odd choice to me, but uh, I don't mind if it if it slightly hamstrings them. Gentilini. Ozturk, who's had interest from Barcelona and actually wanted to leave initially, but thankfully, because we've got two model citizens at the club, we managed to talk him out of it pretty quickly. Um, sadly, Aramayo has not responded to uh, to Lundberg or Ravella, but um, I'm sure he will soon. Half time, one nil up. Pretty good start to the game, but perhaps we want to get one more goal without conceding. Um, in order to make sure that we've got a really comfortable position for the away leg. Um, really, the most important thing now is is not to concede, because, you know, with the away goals rule that is in uh, is in this game... Oh, that looked like it was going in, to be honest. With the away goals rule, you know, any goals that we do score in the next game would, would see our opponents needing three goals, which isn't impossible, um, but it's probably quite unlikely. I think we are going to make a couple of subs. Perhaps Dawood can come off for Jao Paulo, who I think will swap with Lujan just to get him in his favoured position. Rubio not at his best today, so he will come off too. And on comes Choi. We've really restricted the number of chances they've had today, but not quite enough to be safe at this point I think Bart Mays can come off for... no let's get Oztuk off Aramaya can come on keep him happy 
chance for Porto to counter here, actually. There's not great defending going on. And what a strike from Richard Mullen. He does not sound Portuguese or anything like it, but that is a phenomenal strike. What a goal. Where has that come from? We will proceed with the tactical changes. And that is a bit of a worry. We're in a dangerous position. Now we have to score in the away leg, which should be fine. But not a great position to be in after the home leg. But thankfully, we've been better away from home in Europe anyway. An exciting player seems to have turned up in our youth intake, Stefan Milinkovic. He is actually an gauche predominantly. I think we'll probably play him as, mid, as an attack midfielder if we ever get around to it. I doubt we will. Two jumping reach, three strength, five foot three, but he is 15, so he's going to grow. Um, hopefully he's going to grow. Um, wouldn't mind a Scott McTominay type growth where he goes, you know, eight inches in one year. Um, but he's got some very nice stats already. First touch and passing are both 15. Determination's 15 as well. Decisions, 14. He's going to be a very good player. Um, but yeah, he's an exciting player to have and I'm sure he'll do some damage in the future in this hypothetical universe where we're never going to reach it. Um, anyway, since that one all draw against Porter, we've beaten Hertha Berlin 5-2 at home, Hoffenheim 3-0 at home, Werder Bremen 4-1 away and Mönchengladbach 3-0 at home. So actually th four three-goal victories in a row. Um, let's hope for something similar against Porto and wouldn't mind if we continued it all the way through to the end of the season, to be honest. We are giving the exact same starting eleven a chance to prove that that was just a slight blip, um, not winning that home game against Porto. Um, we've now got Cravella on the bench. I think he missed out last time. I think it was probably through injury, but maybe I just completely missed him off the team sheet by accident. Um, Francisco Thiago starts on the bench as well. And Ar Aramayo, despite being completely abysmal with his morale, um, is in the squad and I'm going to try and keep playing him just to give him some chances but uh, you know when the, when a player's got that morale it can be a bit of a, of a hindrance at least if you're starting them so hopefully a few sub appearances is enough for now to get him feeling actually you know what I could I could be uh, a star here and that's a good save from Quaresma from that one on one dangerous chance for Porto and actually we gave them far too much time and space to work with there and now they've got another counter-attack Molina goes past Carmani like he's not there and we've just scored an absolutely awful own goal what has just happened what what I can't even work out what happened there so Carmani completely missed time his tackle Molina went a bit too far Oh, and then gently he just whacks it directly into Quaresma, who came out weirdly. This is not a good start at all. Very disappointing. Let's berate the boys already. I know it's early on. We are only one goal down. That's not really helped them morale, but um, hopefully it will get them thinking a bit more. We've got to try a bit harder here. Uh, I think we'll up, up the tempo as well, because this is not very impressive so far. We are really playing awfully here. I don't quite know what's going on. Novak exchanges passes with Mullen from that free kick. Lujan wins it back well and then eventually finds Mays. It looked like he might have just given it straight back to Porto, but Mays did manage to get there first. And now loses it to Paulino, who gives it straight to Gentilini. And it's broken out to Daoud and he's put it home. That's more like it. What a finish from Daoud. I think it was an assist from Lujan. Um, both players not started very well, but that's good that they've managed to get on the, the score sheet and the assist as well. Um, but we do need to do a bit more in this game. We're not really that impressive so far. Majority of the chances have been Porto's. And that's half time. And as we head into the second half, we need a goal to go through. In reality, obviously, there's still time. We could go to extra time and penalties. But let's try not to. I think if we if we get a goal, then we definitely are favourites to win because they'd need two goals um, because of the two away goals that we would have at that point. 
Rubio, once again, not really doing much on the left-hand side. A bit disappointing from him. Uh, let's encourage the boys a bit. A couple of players are quite tired, including Lundberg, which is a bit of an odd one. Ah, oh, it's injury, that's why. And then Ozturk can come off for... Yeah, let's get Crivella on. And Bart Mays can go as the deep line playmaker. Come on, lads. Novak. Mullen into Paulino. Poor from Gentilini to let him slip past him. Now, though, we have a chance to counter-attack, and Rubio's just giving it straight back to them. God's sake, what are you doing? Crivella beats his man nicely, slips the ball past him very subtly. And now Gentilini and, and San Martin exchange a few passes. Dowd's in behind, and he's not put it home. That is annoying. That looked like it might have been our moment, but he's put it wide. Some good play here from Porto. This looks dangerous. Oh, that's a great save from Quaresma. Really good strike from the Porto player. And uh, Quaresma's done well to get down to that. And now Dowd looks to spring a one-man counter. Probably he's going to get crowded out pretty quickly. And he is. Abadeki with the challenge. Rubio's definitely going to come off. He's just not been good enough at all today. So Choi can come on. And let's hope that we can nick a late goal. Mays wins the ball back from that throw. It's a poor throw in from them, really. But Mays has done well to get it. And now Choi. And found still. Oh, how's that not gone in? Aquino, um, who actually you may remember at Cape Town Spurs of all places, denying him. He is a world-class goalkeeper, is Aquino. Um, he was wanted by PSG all those years ago. We beat, beat them out to get him. But um, yeah, he's, uh, he's proven to be quite a player. Silly tackle from Crivella and it's a free kick to Porto, but nothing's come of that. We are now beating them just unexpected goals, but... Um, not really been amazing. Let's hope that that team talk can do the magic. Don't know who to bring on. I think perhaps it might be time to bring off Lujan. He's not been incredible today. So we'll get Jao Paolo on. And uh, hopefully he can create something for Daoud to finish. I think I'll encourage the boys. And... Let's hope that this is a counter-attack and not a free-kick goal. Oh, that's very close. Looks like it was offside in the end. But that was a bit scary. Not really good enough. And we'll go to the second half of extra time. We'll demand more now. I just don't quite understand why we've been so poor in this, this tie. Obviously, it's unlucky the, the own goal we conceded at the start of this game. But overall, it's just not been good enough from the boys. And Marco Rodriguez can take the first penalty, then Jao Paulo. And then I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll get some of the others out first and avoid having Crivella. Choi can go there. And Bart Mays. And Gentilini will take them before Crivella, I think. Yeah. In fact, might even go San Martin since he's positive. And then we can go Crivella. There we go. Come on, lads. And I'll just tell the lads to stay calm if they can. Not that it's going to do all that much. Rodriguez. Oh, just about. Very good penalty in the end, but that was very close to bouncing out. Molina. A brilliant penalty from him right into the corner. And now Jao Paolo steps up, having replaced Lujan. Played the entirety of extra time, plus 15 minutes, and puts his, home, puts his penalty home confidently. Mullen, who it was that scored that really good goal in the first leg, puts it home again here. And now Dowd steps up. 
He's been absolutely brilliant this season. Can he score from here? He can. Very good penalties so far. All right in the corner. Very difficult for the keepers to actually get to. And Orlando. Oh, that's, a, that's a very good penalty as well. This is getting a bit scary. Definitely squeaky bum time. Choi. Oh, that's not good. Saved by Aquino. And now Feligueras steps up. We need Quaresma to make at least one save here. And he does. And now we need to score again through Maze. Can he do it? Steps up and hits it straight. Aquino. What is that? Can't be going out to Porto of all teams. Come on, Quaresma. We need another big save from you or Irinu to completely scuff it. And it's another save. Yes, Quaresma, mate. Gentilini now stepping up. We're starting to get some of the odd players. And finally, one of those penalties has gone in. Now, can Quaresma complete the hat trick of saves? No doubt this penalty shootout's going to go on for hours. Rodney Marcelo runs up and. Oh, that's so nearly saved by Quaresma. Unbelievably close. San Martin puts it home. And now up steps pins on once again Quaresma with the chance to prove the hero here and he's unlucky looked like his legs might block that but sadly not and now Crivella who was the anxious one is stepping up and just about gets it home keeper probably could have saved that a bit lucky to still be in this Fernandez now steps up this can be a very long penalty shootout the way this is going so far Fernandez puts it home. Goodness me. It seems Porto just want to match us on everything. Kasprick now. Good penalty. Sweeps her home right into the corner. Very difficult for the keeper to reach. And now it's Dawkins. Another Englishman, maybe? Perhaps Australian? Let's see if Quaresma can repeat the feats from earlier. He can! He can! Well, if we win the Champions League, we know which man to thank. That man is Nuno Quaresma. Quite simply, outstanding from him. Yes, actually, I think I'll do the Jekyll and Hyde chat, because I don't ever often get to do that. I don't think I've ever done it, really. Um, I don't know if we were outstanding in the first half, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Um, and anyway, we'll, we'll skip the next couple of days and see who we get in the next round of the Champions League. Wow, it looks like we're going to have a rematch, uh, an early rematch with Chelsea in the Champions League quarterfinal. That's not what I was expecting, but um, yeah, that's what we're getting. And then if we have a look at the semis, we will play, if we get through, PSG or Inter. That's not an easy draw. Mind you, a Champions League semi-final is never easy. So, if you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. Hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day.